Um, good afternoon, everybody. I'm here to present our short contribution towards a very holistic view of public health. And we're, we're actually going to use real life patient data, Portuguese patient data. And I'm pretty sure you all will be very convinced of everything we are about to say. Of course, we need to start with the state of the art, and we all know that the epidemiology of Western infectious disease is, of course, influenced by the Western solar calendar. And we all know this because of the flu season. And this is true for America, for the United States, for Australia, for Spain, and of course, for Portugal. And I'm sure half of us are with the flu right now, and I'm sure that the colleagues uh, uh, who told us about the importance of avoiding meetings and using our cell phones, I've already left for fear of it. Um, however, in spite, oh yeah, that's it. I hope you all can raise your cell phones right now because uh, this is going to get even worse. Um, because what we do not know is how uh, the Eastern lunar cycle actually influences the epidemiology of infections. And uh, we are quite certain that there is a lot of hidden data, hidden epidemiologi epidemiological data right there, eager to come out uh, if we really torture the data hard enough with statistics. Something will come out. Um, because uh, Eastern medicine, as we know, it has a very long is history, uh, and uh, the fact that uh, Eastern holistic methods do influence general health and well-being is pretty much established in the literature, and I only bought brought four articles uh, because I didn't really want to bother you with more and I couldn't find any more. Uh, however, uh, we also know that improved health and improved fitness and reduced stress, which we have proved that holistics, uh, holistic methods do, and most of the women here probably have done yoga before, uh, it does influence the infectious risk. Again, I only found four, but uh, I think four is enough. So. Uh, picking up on that, we can say that holistic methods, Eastern holistic methods, do influence infections, infectious rates. However, out of all uh, the, the contributors to a holistic view of health, there is one that has been pretty much ignored in the literature, and that is mantras. And you know, of course, um, you know, uh, that it has been quite difficult to prove how that impacts actually uh, on health, but we will show you that it does, and that the role of the OM vowel uh, in both mental and physical well-being and therefore infection is really quite relevant. Because if we have established that holistic methods decrease stress and decrease, like, uh, decrease the lack of fitness and therefore uh, influence infection, so does OM decreasing stress, Improving fitness, decreasing infection. I think that is clear enough, and we don't need to do, do, um, delve into that any further. Uh, again, what we know from physiology is that uh, the acquisition of all vowel sounds are pretty much synchronous and identical, so all vowels are created equal. And therefore, if all vowels are equal, they are all equal to OM, and therefore all vowels behave in a biologically identical way, and they all influence infection in a similar way. So again, very clear, very straightforward. However, what do we not know? Uh, we do not know, we have said, how infections are influenced by the lunar calendar and how they are influenced, specifically epidemiologically influenced, by the vowel sounds. And uh, the aims of our work uh, were to demonstrate that, in fact, uh, and we chose nosocomial infections, that is, for those of, of, of you who don't know, infections that are acquired in hospital because it's very much easier to control for and because I work in a hospital and I didn't have any other data. Um, in a Western intermediate care or hospital ward, again because that is where I work, uh, and that they are influenced by both the Chinese lunar cycle and the mantric sounds. Our methods, it's a retrospective analysis. Uh, uh, we took our single hospital ward and we looked at all infections in blood, urine, sputum, pus, uh, pus fecal samples, you know, all, all the nice things, and we actually looked at the bacteria and we class them according to the, uh, the first letter of the genus name. So, vowel-based bacteria and consonant-based bacteria. I think this is, again, uh, quite, quite easy to understand and to follow why we did it. And what we were uh, left with is that, actually, you know, Eschrichia, 
uh, which you all recognize from your urinary tract infections, and your uh, fecal bacteria are vowel-based, and you know, strep throat and all the nice respiratory uh, infections are consonant-based. Again, we also took, at, took our patients and we looked at their first name, and we divided the anus and the fleet uh, into two separate groups, so vowel-based patients and consonant-based patients, and we looked at the lunar year of the infection. Our results are quite staggering, and I'm sure you will all uh, think about health in a, in a different way from now on. So we have a slide with lots of numbers, and that is a marker of good science. So, uh, what, uh, <laughs> so uh, what our slide shows, of course, is that you, you have a peak of infection which is nearly again, lots of numbers, twice as large as the last one, with a very nice p-value, a marker of good science. <laughs> and if we look at the, the influence of the patient's name, again, a two-fold increase, and ditto, very nice p-value as well. Uh, since this is very confusing for you, what we chose to do was actually make some graphs, because everybody likes graphs, and so we can say that vowel-based bacterial infections are statistically influenced by the Chinese zodiac sign. There you have it. So you have the lowest infection rate in the year of the goat, and we'll see why in a little while the highest number of vowel-based infections in the year of the snake, and pretty much stable all in the middle. You'll see I did not color those two because I couldn't explain them. They are n <laughs> neither one nor the other. And what I found very, very interesting is that if you look at the year of the goat, what is the thing you think about when you think of goat? Of course, meh, which is a vowel-based sound. And if Whereas, if you look at the snake, you'll see there are no vowels in the sound. So, again, very, very strong science. And you're all asking, what about the year of the horse that, as you know, started yesterday? So, Happy New Year, everybody! The year of the horse, as you can see, has a below average incidence of vowel-based infections. And if we now look at our patients, our patient names, again, see how I ordered the data so that it would look very interesting and relevant uh, and fit my actual purposes, what we see is that there appears to be some protection when you have a vowel as your first letter in your name, with again, here goes, a twofold increase. And the year of the horse this year is actually quite interesting for vowel name patients because their inf incidence uh, of infections will increase. So again, please, all the people with uh, their names starting with a vowel stand to one side and protect the rest of us. Um, of course, you are asking, yeah, but what about if somebody named Eduardo is infected with Escherichia, so two vowels, what happens? Well, uh, nothing happens. Very nice p-value to prove the other way. Yeah, it is. So we applied the regression model, lots of stats. Lots of stats is also good. And we actually confounded it by not showing any other data which could compromise our, our study. So our conclusions, of course, we have clearly shown that the epidemiology of Western infections is influenced by the Chinese lunar calendar and dharmic omantric sounds, and that E. coli, enterococci, and enterobacter infections peak in the year of the snake, have a below average rate in the year of the goat, whereas patients with vowel-based names have an infections peak, infectious peak, sorry, in the year of the horse this year, and a low in the year of the tiger, and that their zodiac signs did not influence anything. The main conclusions I want you to take, because this is the bit that actually impacts on public health. This is practical medicine, everybody, okay? 2004 will have a below average incidence of urinary tract infections by E. coli, but a higher risk of strep throat. So what does that mean for us physicians? I should think about that when I see a patient with a fever. And if he complains of a sore throat, I should not think about a urinary tract infection. <laughs> On the other hand, 
there will be an increased risk of infections for vowel-based names. And if you think about the number of Antonios in Portugal, this is really a serious and worrisome effect. And I suggest that the Direção Geral de Saúde should really, really uh, specifically allocate resources towards treating the, these patients. And to all of you, what can I suggest? If you really want to avoid uh, infections and protect yourself, you really should just Elio is probably best equipped as a vowel-based. Uh... Uh, yeah, so I actually, uh, I was wondering if you think that you have enough to convince uh, Direção Geral de Saúde to uh, give guidelines on uh, how on, on how to name your children according to the year? That is a tremendous point. Of course, uh, we really should uh, focus on naming our children Tomás and Matilde this year, as has been uh, the, the actual uh, current uh, um, t t trend. But uh, what uh, we actually were thinking about is legal name changes. If somebody has a higher infectious risk, should you really ask an Antonio to re rename himself as Manuel? And therefore, actually, it will be uh, really cheaper to just uh, fill in a form than actually have to spend money on treating an infection and having him in a ward. So. <laughs> I'm just wondering whether whether every vowel is a problem. I mean, you said they're all the same, and of course we can agree with that, but the, the um, you know, why the first one? What about the second letter and the third I just, the reason I mention this is because I know an extremely healthy man. I mean, really, free from throats, urine, you know, all the bad things that you guys work on. And, and he has an extraordinary name. He has 13 letters in his name. And I bet only, he's Indian, and only, and he does a lot of O. Only two vowels. He's only Welsh. two vowels. And they're both I. Okay. Uh, actually, uh, what... Shall, uh, shall I say it? Shall I tell you what his name is? Yeah. Just so you can hear it. It's Chirschnitz. Gesundheit. <laughs> <laughs> It gives me an idea. I have a suggestion that maybe we could also think about preventative measures by renaming the, the infectious diseases, renaming the bacteria. Actually, that Perhaps has been on an done annual before. basis. That has been done before. Helicobacter wasn't always called Helicobacter. And actually, is it an H or is it an E that matters in that case? And as you know, in Portugal, the infections by Helicobacter are much higher than anywhere else in Europe, so you do have a very good point. I see your acumen, I do. <laughs> I was also wondering, like in, in Portuguese, you have the vowels have very different sounds, so imagine if you have Sara or just Sandra, if that would actually have an effect on your infections. Uh, so. Actually, we really can't share that data because it's not been published and uh, it, it's groundbreaking. <laughs> Okay, I have just one, one last uh, question. You, you, you are a doctor, right? Yeah. So how, 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 how have you managed to actually conduct a study with an N bigger than one? Uh, because I didn't know João. If I had known João, I, I would just had, had used him. Questions from the audience? Uh, congratulations on your great work. Thank you. Uh, namaste. Um, I, I wonder, uh, you, you mentioned a lot of vowels, but uh, what about the people that are named with non-vowels, with consonants? I mean, what do we have to worry about? Uh, well, this year, 
nothing. Last year was terrible for you, and I, I bet you got cold last year, didn't you? <laughs> Just putting the two things together, so if you do mantras on the mobile phone, that will be fantastic, <laughs> huh? <laughs> you, you spoke about the noise that the snake makes and the, yeah. and the goat makes. What are you going to do, do in the year of the fox? Because we all know that the dog goes <laughs> woof, the cat goes meow. What does the fox do? I'm glad so many people got that joke. Thank you. Thank you, Martha.